Um, are we good to go? Well, thank you everyone for uh, joining us today for the lunchtime lecture of July. Uh, it's exciting to see standing room only today to attend Claude Denise de Lostra's seminar on Into the Neotropics, looking at the taxonomy and evolution of Agarista in Ericaceae. So just before I begin, I'd like to say a couple of words to introduce Claude Denise and tell you a little bit about um, what brings her here to Brit and a little bit about her background. So Claude Renisi is a PhD student who is currently studying at the Universidade Federal do Rio Grande do Sul in Southern Brazil. And she started her PhD in 2020. I met Claude Renisi virtually, I guess last year, as a PhD student who was at the time applying for a very competitive and prestigious federal grant that is offered by CNPQ, which is the Brazilian equivalent of the National Science Foundation in the United States. Claudia Nisi was interested in joining us at BRIT to do some of her research, to work with our Vice President of Research and Conservation, Dr. Peter Critch, who unfortunately can't be here today because he's doing field work in the Philippines, and myself um, as part of her doctoral dissertation research. So, Claudia Nisi has been here since February 2023. Um, her Sandwichi, as it's called, fellowship application was funded. Since then, she has gone on to receive many other competitive uh, graduate fellowships and awards. In fact, uh, <laughs> she is really getting quite a lot of success with her uh, uh, grant applications. So. Very proud of Claudia Nisi, and I know that your advisor, Gustavo Haydn, also um, is very proud of, of your accomplishments. So anyway, she's here for six months. This is her last month, and we're lucky to have her present today. A little bit about what she's been up to during her time here, and I'm sure you will all enjoy it. I did just want to add a couple of things. Claudia Nisi received her Bachelor of Science in Biology in 2017 from the Universidade Regional Integrado do Alto Uruguai e das Missões in Brazil. And in 2020, she received her Master of Science in Botany, also from the Universidade Federal do Rio Grande do Sul. Um, anyway, without further ado, Claudia Nisi, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you okay. again, and I hope you all enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Morgan. So Morgan already introduced me. Uh, I'm, I'm using on this one. I don't know. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, to, so today, uh, actually, I'm sorry about my English. It's getting better, but still worse. So if you don't understand the movie, uh, it's my my first uh, lecture in completely in English. So, Erin, can you just check if the microphone is working? This one, okay, okay. Uh, so today we are going to take a look at the taxonomy and evolution of, of Agarista into the neotropics. At least the first steps of it. Uh, well, Morgan already introduced me, but just taking a a uh, little background. Uh, I started my to my interest in every case and agarista into my masters uh, when I did the flora of every case to Rio Grande do Sul, and then I saw how much we needed to do already in uh, agarista. And my main project for my PhD is systematics and evolution of of agarista, and. We, my advisor, and we already know Morgan and his work with phylogenomics. But then we, when we saw uh, the Eric Hales program at Breed conducted by Dr. Peter Fritisch, we just thought, yeah, we need to go in there. It's a perfect match. And basically it's why here I'm here. Uh, so let's go to the point. Uh, Eric Hales is pretty much unknown family. Uh, as we, as it have a lot of 
uh, species using by food, like blueberries, cranberries, and other species have that have uh, ornamental uses like uh, azaleas and heaps. Uh, it's a family of uh, cosmopolitan distribution and comprise 160 genera and about 5,000 and, and five, 4,500 species uh, with many uh, habits like subshrubs to trees, sometimes vines and epiphytes, or even echlorophilus and mycotrophic uh, herbs like the the ghost plant. There, this plant doesn't have chlorophyll. Chlorophyll doesn't do photosynthesis, and it uh, receives all the nutrients and water that it needs for its development and surviving through um, relationships with mycorrhizal fungus. It's pretty much interesting. But besides all that diversity, my main focus is on neotropics. Into the neotropical region, every case comprised 46 genera and more than 800 native species. And about 94% uh, of those species are endemic to the neotropics. And they occur especially in cold and open vegetation along the tropical mountains. And there are recognized about six uh, main diversity areas for every case in the neotropics. neotropics. Uh, West Indies, Mexico and North of Central America, Guayana Highlands, Southern Brazil, Temperate Andes, and especially the Tropical Andes. Nowadays, uh, every case is circumscribed under nine subfamilies and 20 tribes. And my special interest is on the subfamily Vaccinoid, but especially on the tribe Lyoni that comprise four, four genera of um, four genera in a clade with, uh, besides other synapomorphic characters, those that dry fruits. So it's um, a group inside the blueberry family with no berries, with dry fruits. So sometimes it's hard to say my product here. And my special interest is actually on the genus Agarista that as you can see in this, this is the main phylogeny for every case. And as you can see, um, Agarista is represented by only two species, the only North American species and the only African species. So all the Central, South America and the great amount of diversity of Agarista is still neglected, uh, especially concerning molecular studies. So Agarista comprises especially subshrubs, shrubs, to trees and is characterized mainly by the genes protected for more than two scales, leaves with dense reticulated venation, inflorescence uh, that, uh, of the type raceme, less common panicles or solitary flowers. The flowers are pentamerous and pendulous and the corolla are gamopetalous and cylindrical and sometimes campanulate, so they are a little bit more open. The calyx lobes are imbricate. Uh, these stamens are geniculate. They have this S shape in, in the fillet. The fillets have this S shape and it's a synapomorphy to Leone also. And of course, the dry fruit, the capsule dry fruits. Nowadays, the, the genus is classified comprise 35 species and is classified uh, in two uh, main sections, uh, morphological and geographical separated. Uh, the section Agarista comprise 34 species that are distributed along the, the American continent and the section Agaria that comprise just one species, Agarista salicifolia. Uh, they're distribu distributed along the African continent, uh, Madagascar and Reunion and Mauritius Islands. So the section Agarista, that's my, my main object of study, comprise uh, 34 species and that are distributed along uh, 15 countries, 
in so far in the neotropical region and comprised about five main regions of diversity similar to those uh, for uh, every case the united states coastal plain mexican region guayana highland and the region and the most diversity brazilian region any one of those uh, main areas of diversity comprise a uh, endemic set of species except for the guayana highland because agarista duque occurs uh, in colombia venezuela the state of Pará, the Brazilian Amazon, but also here in the uh, northwest of, in the central, in the west, sorry, of Brazil in the state of Mato Grosso. The Brazilian region, so it's the most diverse region uh, for agarista. It comprises 34 species and can be divided into two smaller subunities of diversity. The, uh, the subunit itself comprise seven species uh, distributed along the three states, Rio Grande do Sul, Santa Catarina, and Paraná, and occurring along the, these rock outcrops, almost the poise in the uh, temperate grasslands of Pampa, and also in the subtropical grasslands of Mata Atlântica. This subunit north is the most diversity uh, comprise 20 species distributed along 40, 14 states. And from those 20 species, 16 occurs in the state of Minas Gerais, famous by those bread of cheese, pão de queijo. And half of those species are endemic to, to this state. And the, and the um, southwest, especially this region of Espinal mountain chain to comprise the center of diversity of the genes. But the area of origin of the uh, agarista still is un unknown. Uh, we know that the North America is a key ancestral area for the origin of the subfamily vaccinoid, and that must be occurred at least two dispersal events uh, into the South America. So we have the hypothesis that uh, something similar could happen with uh, agarista, since we have this connection in Guayana highlands and also through the uh, tropical Andes, and, since, and also because agarista duque that occurs in this region and agarista flora and subcordata have um, some characters considered early divergent in, into the genus. And knowing all of this, uh, the main research objective of this project is to carry out systematic treatment for the genus in the neotropical region and recon reconstruct the phylogeny and the evolutionary relationships into the group. Uh, and our mm, main aim is to understand the evolutionary process that influenced the origin, diversification of the genus, and the current biogeographical patterns. And what we did to achieve it, first, of course, the revision of literature. Uh, we started uh, looking for the original publication of the first species of the genus, Agarista populifolia and Agarista salicifolia, published by Linnaeus, and at that time uh, published under Andromeda. Uh, for all infragenetic texts are published uh, in Agarista and also in Andromeda and Leucotoy that are synonyms of uh, Agarista. Classic works as the revision from Sloimer of the genus Leucotoy, the revision of American species of Agarista from Judd, and recent publications as new species, flora surveys, pharmacological, and everything that involved uh, the genus you look for. We also treated nomenclature issues, and this part is a detective job in a, in a taxonomic work. Uh, when a, when a species is published, and we look for all species published uh, in Agarista, and when one species is published, uh, it comprises a voucher that's a sample of the species collected in the field, dried and deposited in a collection, in this case in herbarium, and also the description of this new species. The protocol can also com need to also comprise the location where this plant was collected, the date, who collected um, the number of the collection and their burial 
from for when this sample was sent. And compiling all this information, we generate this uh, header like this that comprises the accepted name, the synonyms that can be homotypic uh, when different names are related to the same species that are indicated for this symbol, and heterotypic when different species are uh, actually the same species and they are indicated for this symbol. And usually, but sometimes, uh, sorry. Uh, and then here we have the location of the collection, date, collector, number of collection, and their bag. But sometimes, actually most of times, we don't have all this complete information. So like here, we don't have the location, no date. We have the collector, but we don't have the number. And also we don't have the holotype. Uh, and other times, we also have the, the only remaining material is like this, so are just fragments of leaves and flowers, and you can tell if it is it is actually the the species, or use this to certify if it's the real uh, original material that you are looking for. So we need to to start our hunting for serial collectors or serial uh, species descriptors, looking for to respond some questions like when the collector collected this species, uh, where he collected, in which herbarium he used to send or deposit these collections, and where is the actual location of this collection? Because like more, uh, the greatest amount of uh, agarista species was described during the ninth century. So the name of the locations and cities during that time was pretty much different than now. So we need to figure out where exactly the collector did this collection, but okay until there. But there's sometimes there's no type, the type material is no longer available. So more questions, was it lost? Was it destroyed, read, when? Like uh, for Agarista it's uh, pretty common, but for every case too. Uh, during the second war, uh, most of type specimens that was, that was were deposited on the Herbarium Berlinense in Berlin. The Herbarium B was destroyed, was destroyed by a fire, and may, especially neotropical species, type species, but all the agarista neotropical species was lost. So sometimes we can track this information through the collection number uh, or the label, but sometimes we also have those situations that we have basically nothing. And then we can track more information uh, through studies that uh, for another groups with the same situation, same collector, or sometimes just talking with the right person. And uh, doing all of these, all of the steps and some steps more, uh, we were able to produce my PhD qualification article that treats about typification and nomenclatural notes on agarista. Uh, during my master's, I already started uh, doing the typification of five names. And now we finished the nomenclature issues in the genus and 30 names uh, was typified, being in, and the article was already accepted uh, in phytotaxa. We made 12 lectotifications. Uh, lectotifications is when uh, the holotypes lost, and then you need to uh, designate another uh, exicate, another duplicate of the original collection to be is like the ID card for these species. And we all selected two ape types. That means um, when this lectification was indicated, but was uh, exicate like that, was a sheet like that one that I saw, that I showed it uh, before with just some fragments. Uh, we need to designate another material uh, as similar as possible to that one to be as an interpretative type for this, this material. We also made a notification that's when there is 
any more material available was everything lost or this everything lost or destroyed and we also made an update on the collection of a type location for agarista oleifolia and this was pretty interesting because it was the first and so far all in all record for agarista to the states of tocantins This part was my first two and pandemic PhD years. And then in 2021, I started the herbarium review, still slowly, because in 2021, there are just few herbarium open and pretty slowly. Uh, in that part, in the herbarium, I looked for the species that was already collected and deposited in the herbarium. Uh, I checked for the correct ID check and update my own database constructed during the pandemic through online databases. I measured and described the specimens and also collected samples for DNA and scanning electronic microscopy. Until now, I visit 28 herbaria, uh, being 21 in Brazil and seven in the United States. This part was really important because was the First time that I get in contact with some species that occur along the South and Central America, and then I didn't have available on Brazilian herbaria, and also the um, African species. And in the second semester, I'm scheduled already to visit another four herbaria at Bahia and Santa Catarina states in Brazil. And I also made field work. Uh, to collect samples of those species, photographing the, the, the species in the field, take the coordinates to update the distribution, uh, take notes on habitat, habit, and morphology, especially these characters that are only available to see in the field, like uh, color of the flowers, the honey scent of some species flowers. And I, I also register the patrolling for uh, of ants into the um, small of the younger leaves so uh, some structures that we saw on leaves the uh, some foveate glands now we know that actually they are extra extra floral nectaries and we don't have time now to uh, use an anatomical approach so we use it the uh, scanning electronic microscopy, trying to see if there are something different, but when you look at it, it was, okay, nothing different, but waiting for. And also to collect samples in silica for DNA extraction. I made uh, four field trips in three different states. Uh, was one in subtropical highland grasslands of Mata Atlantica and subtropical lowland grasslands of Pampa in the state of Rio Grande do Sul. Uh, one in the subtropical subtrop highland grasslands in Santa Catarina. And two in the tropical highland, highland grasslands of Cerrado in Minas Gerais. Uh, and this type of vegetation uh, better known as and for the second semester of this year, uh, we are also have a schedule uh, field work to Bahia and Minas Gerais again. And well, so my PhD sandwich fellowship, uh, I came here. My my main objective was to carry out the phylogenomic part uh, of my work, but then I also was able to uh, review uh, seven of North American herbaria during from during 14 days from March to, to April uh, and also uh, carry out my plan B <laughs> for the phylogenomic studies and select uh, material into the herbariums for uh, DNA extraction. Do the DNA extraction, uh, capture image on the uh, scanning electronic microscope. Thank you, Marsha, that's Thank not you. here. <laughs> and DNA sequencing in Texas Tech that actually we're not being able to do it right now when I'm here, but it's going to be done soon. And so what we achieved until now, uh, 
two new species, five new occurrence, DNA extraction of 50, 53 samples. Uh, actually, I have about nine, four more uh, samples coming from Brazil. They are coming like since February, but once they will arrive. Uh, we made the SAN from about 19 structures uh, between uh, in seeds, pollen, enter, trichomes, deep surface, and sigma. My main objective was looking for difference in seed surface, but as they had no much difference, I constructed uh, a big database with all possible structures. And I also was awarded with four grants and awards, two from the Society of Systematic Biologists, Admin Arts and Graduate Student Research Award, and the SPT Graduate, Graduate Student Research Grant, and the DSA Postdoc Travel Award that will allow me to be at the Botany in Boise this year, actually, in the end of this month. And our next steps. Uh, Chronologically, you have the participation presentation on botany, DNA sequencing, yeah. uh, participation presentation on the National Botanic Congress in Brazil, and another uh, small and more local botanical event in there too. Uh, the generation of the first agarista phylogeny using phylogenomic data that I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. And the biogeography analysis, characters reconstruction, the taxonomic treatment, treat risk assessment, and analyzing everything all of these and writing at least uh, four, with guarantee, uh, articles. And we know that always can, can be more. Uh, the first one will be a new species of for Agarista to Peru. Uh, the other species is from Brazil and is under internal review. Uh, the phylogeny of Agarista through a phylogenomic approach, taxonomic revision of Agarista, and view geography and evolution of Agarista. And during this time, also updating the this huge and amazing platform for flora and fungi do, of Brazil. And thank you. We have uh, time for questions. If anyone has any questions, bring it up. I think you indicated at the beginning of your talk uh, a lot of these species you point to be are endemic. Mm -hmm. How do you explain that? Uh, very specific, uh, very specific environments. Uh, mountains. There is a lot of micro endemics. Uh, a lot of micro habitats. And I imagine that there is a lot of uh, local speciation. Like uh, when I showed uh, the center of diversity in Southern uh, Brazil, at, at least for Agarista, uh, they occur just from in specific environments and specific altitudes. So they probably arrived to this region and speciated in there in those many very uh, specific environments. So the mountains have uh, this, this amount of uh, many specific environments and probably those species are endemic and very specific of just some small points, no. So you're saying they invaded specific habitats and environments. Yeah. Most people don't realize Brazil is a big country. So big, country. yeah, um, yeah, almost. That's really rough country. Another question: um, You showed Monotropus unifolium, mm -hmm. which is a flowering plant, but not chlorophyll, mm -hmm. and that's very unusual. Uh, it's very common in the temperate regions, such mm -hmm. as Smoky Mountains National Park. Is it common in your No, no, it doesn't yeah. occur in there. Yeah, in Brazil, there, there are just three main genus, Galocacea, Agarista, and Galteria, and another nine in just in Amazon region, especially on these savanna regions inside the Amazon. But no, uh, Monotropa doesn't occur in there. But it's a, a very interesting species. So. <laughs> Can I have a quick question? I was just curious. I didn't think about this until I saw all the pictures of the fruits. 
for some reason right now. Um, but I know it, traditionally in Mexico, it's been difficult to get fossil um, evidence of, of fossils in the subfamily. And that has made it difficult to do like divergence dating estimates mm -hmm. because you know you have these fleshy berries in most of the subfamily, they don't preserve well as fossils. But having these dry capsules, I'm curious if there's been any fossil discovery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that might be really important, I guess, for the whole family, actually. Yeah, actually, there is a, a, a fossil in Leonia, one in, one in vaccine. Vaccini and one in Leonia, but there is one in Leonia. <laughs> yeah. That's convenient and helpful. Mm -hmm, very helpful. Once you have data or anything. Mm -hmm. analysis. Could you talk more about the disjunction between the South American agarites and the African? So uh, I just started when I was reviewing reviewing the herbaria in Missouri to take a, a better look into this section of African species. They are supposed to be just one species, but we separated a lot of um, many different morphotypes and Madagascar, there are also different, very different morphotypes. Uh, and then I started to take a better look on it, but I made in, baby steps because there was another person working with it uh, some years ago never published but we are uh, waiting waiting for and trying to resolve it better for now i'm just describing these species generally and we uh we have all this this morphotype sample sample uh for dna and then we are going to see what is happen when constructing the phylogeny phylogeny with with those morphotypes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for your talk. It really was a great talk. So congratulations. I think this project is so beautiful and we have been very lucky to have them here. Thank so, you. Um, I have a couple of questions. That's like, you know, one, so there's the only phylogeny that you have is that that where you have only two agaristas or yeah basically or... just one uh no <laughs> uh we have another one but was never published that's revision of galusacea and where they use it some agarista ex external groups about six but was uh no resolution so the market No idea yet. Uh, what we have officially is just this, this both one because this uh, work in this study with Galusacea doesn't use it the North American or the the African just the South American ones just six and with no resolution. So my other question is, what does agarista mean? What does it mean? Uh, the, the name agarista, it's for a uh, daughter of a god it's a it's, it's greek but some uh, that means uh pretty beautiful something like this yeah I mean, it, it is <laughs> um, so do you know anything about pollination and this version of this uh, uh pollination uh by mops uh uh these birds um human birds uh some of human birds and i saw a lot of uh small bugs and emitera insects too so just <laughs> this we doesn't have register for like human birds or kind of stuff in agarista more in galusacea that have this campanulate flowers too so we are basically no nothing. Thank you. Yep. I have another question. Um, the campanulous flowers, the bell shaped flowers, mm -hmm. you showed in your early photographs, they were very colorful. I wonder if any of the species have been introduced to the tiny gardens and are they used as ornamentals? 
Agarista populifolia, yes, there are in some, some gardens that's the, the species that occur in North America, some yet. And actually it's interesting because part of my original project uh, was also to, to see the ornamental uh, potential of the Brazilian species, but the resource was cut off the, <laughs> the Embrapa and we didn't keep this this part of the project. Are they in the USA then as ornamentals in any garden? Uh, I think that New York have oh, okay. one, but I saw like in Portugal too, actually in, in their barium, I was looking, oh, it's a strange occurrence in there. And then I look, oh, it's in the botanical garden. Okay. Is there any medical or economical uh, use for a uh not too much but for uh for this species for this african species uh in there uh, agarista salicifolia is used a lot as a medicinal plant uh and actually there are some pharmacological uh published works with a wrong name and we don't know if there is only one species or more species and it's pretty dangerous as it's largely used as in the medicine field, but it's basically just just that one, that just that use. Since they're so highly endemic, this Brazil, are they a signatory to uh, the uh, societies, and are any of the species considered endangered? In other words, are they on a red list? Are there any species in danger? And what are they, is Brazil doing to protect them? Yeah, there are some species endangered, just few, because we are doing this part now. It's part of my, my PhD. I also evaluate the treatment risk of the species. But those are smaller steps. And many of those species are, especially Minas Gerais, is a big area of mining. Uh, so not much has been done. And what we can do for now is just declare as uh, the status of endangered of it. Did you collect in any national parks? I didn't see any. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. At Serra do Cipó. And some state parks uh, more in the south of Minas Gerais. And there is uh, another area uh, where I'm describing a new species in Brazil, the Diamantina Plateau. That's not a, a, a park, that's not a protected area, but have this large amount of species and endemic species. Like uh, in the last few years, there was about 32 species described just in this small region. Any other questions? <clears throat> if not, uh, yeah, so. Um, what would you like to do after your university? What do you want to work on? Probably my uh, try a, a postdoc to come develop this this part with uh, the African species that will be my main objective. Well, um, I just want to give another round of applause. Thank you. Well, really wonderful talk. Thank you. Amazing. I want to essentially add up. I noticed you mentioned this earlier. Even if you haven't seen a lot of these in the mountains, because she's been traveling quite a bit throughout the US, really impressed with the amount of work that she's gotten done as part of her doctoral dissertation research. And to see it all put together in this presentation today was really special. Traveling independently for the first time in the U.S. to Missouri Botanical Garden, the Field Museum in Chicago, New York Botanical Garden, Harvard University Herbarium, the Smithsonian, and at the end of this month to Boise, Idaho to present again on your work, working and learning laboratory techniques, SEM, DNA extraction. Unfortunately, as she mentioned, we're not able to get to the sequencing part because we're waiting on the rest of our samples to arrive. But that's going to continue. And we might be interested in recruiting someone who knows how to do molecular 
DNA extraction in particular to help with extraction of the remaining specimens when they arrive so that we can send them to Texas Tech and have the sequences available. So if you were to know, might be interested in that, um, please feel free to talk to Claudia Nisi when you have a chance, or myself. And um, again, thank you so much, Claudia Nisi, and thank you everyone for great questions. So, thank thank uh, you for the opportunity. Thanks. Thank you. That's so nice. You're like, taking everything perfect. Oh.